These are your notes over day two for linear programming. We're going to focus on some word problems today. And because we're dealing with word problems, I've got some key words here that you can reference as you're going through um, your assignment later today. So you have a greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, and the terms that are associated with each symbol listed below those. The steps that we're going to use to solve today, we're just going to add on a little bit to what we did yesterday. So yesterday we talked about the basics of linear programming, just the basic steps to graphing your constraints, identifying the vertices um, of the feasible region, and then finding your minimum and maximum values. So today that all means something because we're dealing with word problems. Remember the goal of, and I'm gonna highlight some stuff here, let's highlight. So the goal of a linear programming model is to find a way to get the most or the least of some quantity. So how can we get the most or the least of some quantity? Now, what is that quantity? Um, it's often the most amount of profit or the least amount of cost. So it's important because it's a word problem to read the problem thoroughly so you understand your objective. What are you trying to accomplish? Okay, what are you trying to minimize? What are you trying to maximize? So here are the steps that you're gonna use. Um, whenever you're solving these problems and you can refer back to these as you do your assignment, right? Because a lot of times when you go through steps before you do a word problem, it's just really hard to even grasp it. So the first thing we're going to do is define our variables. So how much of what things? These are often called the decision variables, okay? Um, but you're going to define those, right? Let x equals, let y equals, what are you talking about? Then you're going to write your objective function. You're going to use those variables that you defined to write an expression that describes what you're trying to minimize or maximize. Okay, what are you trying to do? Then you'll write your constraints, which are your inequalities. Those are the restrictions or limitations that um, I talked about yesterday. And then you'll solve. So step, step four is what we did yesterday. Okay, steps one through three, those are new for um, today's lesson. So right here, these are your day one steps. All right, so let's move on to the first example. And I'm actually gonna do one example in this video and then I'm gonna reserve the next video for example number two. So this problem says, a local farmer grows corn and wheat. It costs $20 to grow a bushel of corn and takes four acres of land. It costs $30, and I'm, I'm actually gonna mark this up. It costs $20, is it gonna let me write on here? $20 to grow a bushel of corn and takes uh, four acres of land. It costs $30 to grow a bushel of wheat and takes three acres of land. He has no more than $180 to spend and 24 acres of land available. If he makes a $50 profit on each bushel of corn and a $60 profit on each bushel of wheat, how many bushels of each should the farmer grow to maximize his profits? Define the variables. So we've got a lot of stuff going on here. We're asked to find how many bushels of each should he grow to maximize his profits? So that's what we're asked to find, how many bushels of each. So those are gonna be our decision variables and we're gonna define those. We'll let X equal bushels of corn and we'll let y equal the bushels of wheat, okay? So because it's a dreaded word problem, there's just so much to look at. Um, let's first just kind of like dissect this word problem. Let's look at the corn, okay? And I'm gonna change colors here. We'll look at the corn first, all right? Um, it grows, it costs $20 to grow and takes four acres of land. Okay, so we're talking about um, how much it costs and how much land. When we look at the wheat, it takes $30 to grow and takes three acres of land. So again, the cost and the land. He has no more than $180. Okay, that sounds like a limitation, right? Can't spend more than that, right? More than, that's an inequality and 20 acres, again, no more than 24 acres of land available. So that sounds like another limitation or constraint. So now if he makes a $50 profit 
on each bushel of corn and a $60 profit on each bushel of wheat, okay, we're looking to maximize our profits. That's the objective. So often an objective function is not um, an equation, but I'm gonna go ahead and write P equals, right? Our profit, all right, equals, this is really our objective function, right? Our expression. He makes a $50 profit on each bushel of corn. So 50 times the number of bushels of corn plus $60 profit on each bushel of wheat, 60 times the number of bushels of wheat, that'll get me my total profit. But the question is, what should those values of X and Y be so that we maximize our profit? Okay, that's the objective function. That's what we're looking to find. But now we need to write our constraints. Okay, what are the limitations that we are provided given this scenario? Well, the first would be, let's look at the costs, okay? All right, there are some costs associated with this. If it costs $20 to grow a bushel of corn and it costs $30 to grow a bushel of wheat, then I know that 20X plus 30Y, right? Because 20 times the number of bushels of corn plus 30 times the number of bushels of wheat well, that needs to be less than or equal to the amount that I have to spend, which is $180. So there's my first limitation, right? That is the cost involved. I can't spend more than $180, but I can spend $180. That's how I get this less than or equal to. Okay, what's the next constraint? I also have a limited um, amount of land available. So let's write another constraint that deals with land. Let's see, it takes four acres of land to grow a bushel of corn, and it takes three acres of land to grow a bushel of wheat. So I know four times X plus three times Y needs to be less than or equal to the amount of land I have available, which is 24 acres. So there's our next limitation. And then the next limitations that I'm going to give to you are called non-negativity constraints which means, which it would be like X is greater than or equal to zero, right? So the bushels of corn, I'm not gonna have negative bushels of corn, okay? I'm dealing with only positive amount. I can have zero, but um, I'm only dealing with a positive amount. And Y is greater than or equal to zero. So these are called non-negativity constraints, okay? Which are basically, you know, the number of bushels cannot be negative. cannot be negative, okay? So your non-negativity constraints, those are just um, what we need, okay? So that's gonna restrict us, those non-negativity constraints are what's gonna restrict, restrict us to the first quadrant. So the next thing I'm gonna do after I have defined the variables, I've written the objective function, I've written the constraints, I'm now gonna graph those constraints on my coordinate plane. So we're in step four today, which is everything we did yesterday. Okay, these problems take a very long time, but they're super important. So let's graph these. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is graph my um, non-negativity constraints. So I've got this X is greater than or equal to zero, right? I've got that constraint. And I'm gonna write x equals zero, okay? Because I always write the equation of that line and then I know where to graph, right? X is greater than or equal to zero, I'm gonna graph to the right. And then I've got y is greater than or equal to zero. So I'm gonna plot this line y equals zero and I know I'm gonna graph above it, okay? So now let's look at um, each of these other, these this cost and this land constraint. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write this cost constraint right here. So 20x plus 30y is less than or equal to 180. And I'm gonna solve for y because I need to put it, um, my equation or inequality in slope intercept form so that I can graph it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is subtract 20 from both sides. So 30y is less than or equal to negative 20x plus 180. And then I'm gonna divide both sides by 30. So y is less than or equal to, and every term gets divided by 30. So I've got negative, two-thirds x plus six. And this is the next line and inequality that I'm gonna graph. So um, right here, 
since this is Algebra 2 and this is like first time you've probably ever seen this, um, a lot of the graphs that I have are already scaled for you unless um, I tell you to scale by ones. Okay, so we're going to graph by ones. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot my y-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then my slope is down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. So this right here is the line y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 6. And then if I wanted to shade it, I would be shading like below that line, okay, which would result in like this little triangle right here. Okay, so I've got this line right here and it's not really very well drawn. Okay, that doesn't make it any better. Okay, so let's graph uh, the next inequality here and then we'll um, do some shading. So the next one, let's look at land. I've got 4x plus 3y is less than or equal to 24. So again, this is just what we did yesterday, right? we got to solve for y. We have to do all these steps. There are so many steps involved, I know. So I'm going to solve for y. Subtract 4x from both sides. Negative 4x plus 24. And then if I divide both sides by 3, I get y is less than or equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 8. So this is the next inequality that I'm going to graph. And the first thing I'm going to do is graph my y-intercept. So it's going to be two above this one. It's going to be at positive eight. And then my slope is down four over three. So down one, two, three, four over three. Oh, look there. Boom. One, two, three, four over three. And y is going to be less than or equal to this line right here, which this line is y equals negative four thirds x plus eight, negative four thirds x plus eight. So now where's our feasible region? Where should we be shading? Let's see, what color am I gonna use? Um, I'm gonna use this purple right here. So my feasible region, I know I'm restricted to x is greater than or equal to zero, y is greater than or equal to zero. I know I'm below that red line and I'm also below the orange line, which means my feasible region is actually right here. Okay, this is my feasible region. So um, this is the area that satisfies all of the constraints, right? All of the linear inequalities, every point in there satisfies um, all of the constraints. Now, how do we maximize or minimize this? In this case, we're wanting to maximize our profit, right? So yesterday I had you plug in your vert vertice points, your coordinates of your, each vertex, and find your minimum and maximum values. This actually wants you to maximize your profits. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find all of the vertices for our feasible region. And we have four. And we're gonna list those points, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list zero, zero. Often you don't have to because you know, I mean, zero, zero, I know I'm going to get like a zero profit, right? So zero, zero, the next vertex is up here, zero, six. So I'm just doing what we did yesterday where I kind of start at that like um, most leftist lowest point and then I kind of work my way around um, clockwise. But a lot of people, you know, they'll label them something like Roman numerals or ABCD, something like that. And then I've got a point right here, which Technically, what you should do is given, you know, this line right here, like y equals negative two thirds x plus six and y equals negative four thirds x plus eight, um, you could find the solution to that system of equations. So if you were asked to prove that that is a vertex, you know, that's what you would do. OK, you would find the solution to that system of linear equations. But because this is just like kind of basic linear programming, and we've scaled by ones, we know that's their point of intersection, which is right three up four, so that's gonna be three, four. And then the last point right here is gonna be six, zero. So I've got my four vertices, I've got my objective function, now I'm gonna plug in each of those points into the objective function to find the value. Okay, so let's do the first one. 50 times zero plus 60 times zero. Oh look, we'll have a profit of zero. Okay, what if I plug in 0, 6? 50 times 0 plus 60 times 6, that's going to be 360. 
And then if I plug in 50 times 3 plus 60 times 4, let's see, 150 plus 240, that's going to be 390. And then if I plug in 50 times 6 plus 60 whoop, times 0, I'm going to get 300. Okay, so now, which one would be our minimum? Which one would be our maximum? Okay, well, we're actually asked to find the maximum. So what's the highest value of Z, if you will? It's going to be right here. Okay, 390. This is the maximum, right? Where does that occur? That occurs right here at this point. Okay, 3, 4. So 390 occurs at the point 3, 4, which would be what? Well, let's go back to our decision variables. X is the bushels of corn. Y is the bushels of wheat. So how would we write this um, in a conclusion? I would write something like, you know, I've done all this work. Let's see. I would say something like, therefore, right? You don't need that. I really like it. All of this work leads me to this conclusion. So because of all of this, therefore, the farmer should grow how many? Three bushels of corn, right? It occurs at three, four. So three bushels of corn, because X represents the bushels of corn, and four bushels of wheat to what? To maximize his profits. So we're maximizing profits given um, these different constraints. All right, let's move on to the next example. And that's going to be in your next video.